everyone. Welcome to Future Proof, where I nerd out about classic sci-fi staples and their real-world counterparts. I'm your host, Michael Swain, the man with the surname that can no longer be acronymed. I use them all up, court order. So what's always intriguing me? Today, it's mind reading, telepathy, the big brain enchilada, not the ones you can order at your more adventuresome taquerias. And I know what you're thinking, literally. For we are psychically linked and therefore sense every time either one of us masturbates. Oh, you're gonna go now? That's gonna make focusing on the video tough, but do what you gotta do, I guess. Whether you think ESP stands for extrasensory perception or extremely stupid people, it's got a pop culture and real world history reaching back as far as history has been recorded. The idea of being able to share thoughts, read minds, or otherwise tap into another human being's brain fascinates us endlessly on account of it's pretty lonely being stuck inside a meat machine. Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud believed telepathy was an atrophied human ability based on their observations of animals and their own dreams, which is how you used to do science apparently. Buck Rogers Rogers, one of the earliest sci-fi serials ever put to radio, features an episode where the crew gets mind-controlled into mining ore for their alien overlords. From there, the psi was the limit. Psychic powers cover a broad spectrum of abilities, from Professor X projecting images into another's mind, to Aquaman talking to fish. Obviously one of those is clearly better than the other, because talking to fish rules. Fish think so much interesting stuff, guys, you have no idea. In fact, the Marvel and DC universes are littered with telepaths, empaths, and other kinds of psychic to balance out the fact that everyone else has super strength. Here's six of the dumbest psychics, just to prove my point. Gorilla Grodd, the girl with the x-ray mind, Dubalax, the mind bomber, Judge Shiko, and the Zonians with no vocal cords. What they do have is the ability to communicate without speaking, just one of the fancy things you can do with a psychic brain. The Parapsychological Association, yes, that's a thing, recognizes two categories of psychic ability, Psi Kappa and Psi Gamma, or receptive and projective. Reading minds or seeing the future would be receptive, since they occur within the confines of the telepath's mind. Projective powers are more like the Jedi mind trick. They make something happen. Not to mention, Obi-Wan sensing a disturbance in the Force is one of pop culture's most enshrined visions of telepathy generally. I felt a great disturbance in the Force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I feel something terrible has happened. Sometimes, like a Vulcan mind meld or Dream Fast from the Dark Crystal series, Physical contact is necessary to get the full effect. Probably the funniest example of this is from Kurt Vonnegut's book Slapstick, in which a brother and sister team share powerful mental abilities as long as they're snuffling around in each other's crotches and butts. Oh, you finished masturbating? Thanks for the heads up, bud. Everywhere from the Godzilla franchise to Pacific Rim to a whole bushel of Pokemon to f***ing Gilligan's Island, our fiction is rife with psychics. What's really incredible is that the thoughts they pick up are almost always coherent sentences that move the plot forward, and not a random cacophony of snippets and looping songs. I get knocked down! I get knocked down again! You're never gonna knock me down! Oh, and in case you were wondering, Gilligan finds some magic seeds that make the Islanders temporarily able to hear each other's thoughts. I forget how it ended. I think Gilligan did the scanners thing to the skipper's head. Once you start thinking about it, you quickly realize that almost every science fiction thing ever made has a psychic component. Firefly, Farscape, Doctor Who, Babylon 5, Star Trek, The Outer Limits, Stargate Atlantis, Alien Nation, The Twilight Zone, Sense8, and The Power Rangers all feature an episode or recurring character with fabulous mind powers. It speaks to our own fascination with the human brain which remains one of the least understood and gushiest of organs. That must be why so many psychics get a little nosebleed when they push it too far. Trust me, if you wanna know if your fortune teller, tarot reader, or ghost whisperer is the real deal, look for that telltale nosebleed. Cause one if you have to. Punches work good. As soon and as I'll you give us the way. money, dickwad! But what about in real life? Charlatans and parlor tricks aside, is there any hope for us lonely souls who want to get intimate with the mind of another? The good news is yes. The bad news is you have to be a rat and get brain surgery. Scientists from Duke University connected two rat brains with electrodes and separated them, one in North Carolina and one in Brazil. Nevertheless, when presented with a complex problem only one rat knew how to complete, 
the other rat was able to navigate the same problem a thousand miles away. It's kind of like the scene in The Matrix where they download helicopter flying lessons, but if Neo had a giant electrode drilled through his skull, which, let's be honest, would have been a huge upgrade. Other forms of technologically induced mind control are starting to develop too. Speaking of a giant electrode to the skull, neurologist Phil Kennedy thinks cell phones will soon be implanted under your head skin and respond to your thoughts. That's not an impossible claim, as there are already a number of video games controlled purely by thought, like the VR game Awakening by neurotech startup Neurable. I mean, even the fact that there can be such a thing as a neurotech startup that isn't just an empty warehouse is promising. Dr. Kennedy, who's really gung-ho on this stuff, also envisions mind-controlled exoskeletons, returning mobility to the paralyzed and otherwise disabled, and silent speech for those with locked-in syndrome. Obviously, if this were a movie, both of those things would result in an immediate nightmare scenario filled with rogue exosuits and some kind of psychic supervillain floating around silently speaking to his vast army of coma patients. But in the real world, these technologies could someday provide real benefits to people, not to mention let you send a text message to your friend just by thinking it. Which is no creepier than Siri, which is to say, medium creepy. Can't wait till they incorporate targeted advertising. Light speed briefs, style and comfort for the discriminating crotch. <gasps> What a weird dream. Good old-fashioned organic ESP isn't completely out of the question either. Now I'm talking, of course, about the Orchestrated Objective Reduction Theory, or ORC-OR, pioneered by physicist Roger Penrose and anesthetologist Stuart Hameroff in the 1990s. In a nutshell, the incredibly complex theory suggests that human consciousness occurs in the brain thanks to quantum waveforms tucked away in tiny structures called microtubules. This is really wild if you know about quantum stuff, because traditionally quantum phenomena are observed primarily in extremely cold, static, and controlled environments. But it turns out your very own brain's microtubules hold quantum waveforms. And the thing about quantum waveforms, why a quantum computer would be so powerful, for instance, is that they can maintain superpositions which means they can be in multiple places or be multiple things at once. It's thought that this phenomena is key to photosynthesis in plants, by the way. When a photon hits a leaf, it has to map its way to the plant's reaction center before all of its energy runs out. And it does this in the simplest way possible. It cheats. The exciton, the particle formed when the photon hits the plant, tries every possible path through the plant at once, then collapses into the path that proved successful. It's kind of like a maze on a child's placemat if you just scribble the crayon all over indiscriminately. The other crazy thing about having a brain full of quantum superpositions is that quantum particles often get entangled with one another, becoming connected despite any distance between them like a couple of soon-to-be-dead rats. This suggests that the experience we call consciousness, or even the feeling of free will, isn't housed entirely within the brain, but extends outside of it into the universe itself. It may not give you the ability to ferret out someone's deepest fear, but what happens in the brain doesn't stay in the brain, and that suggests the possibility of linkage or meaningful interaction. So hey, try it at home! See if you can't pick up what your roommate's laying down, or force someone on the street to fall to their knees and just start screaming and screaming. I mean, that's what I'd do. Uh-oh, nosebleed, gotta go. See you next time on Future Proof.